Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Dansky here with another tutorial. And in this video, we're going to be learning how to create a navigation arrow. Now you will see this on websites, on apps, uh, in carousels, all sorts of places all over the web. So it's a really good one to know how to create. So there's a number of different ways you can do this. One way that is very simple is to select the rectangle tool. Just click and drag. We're going to get rid of the fill and then just put the stroke color in its place, just so we've got black as our fill with no stroke or outline. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the rotate tool and hold shift to rotate at an angle of 45 degrees. And what we're going to do is click and hold shift and alt and drag perfectly straight down, creating a copy at the same time. And then selecting again and holding, uh, selecting the rotate tool, you can just hold shift again to rotate like so. And then hold shift again just to make sure that they stay in line with one another. And move them up, zoom in nice and close and just move them up into place so they're seamless. Now we're just going to create the caps for these on the end. So what we can do is select our ellipse tool, hold down shift and drag. Now we want it to be the same width as this here. So one thing we can do is we'll create a copy of this by holding shift and alt. We'll rotate it so it stands straight back up. And then we'll look at our width up here and our width is 78 pixels. So if we select our ellipse, make sure that we've got this link here so it constrains the width and the height proportions. We'll punch in 78 and click enter. And now we know that it's exactly the same width here. And what we can do is just select the direct selection tool and just select that bottom anchor point and we'll hit backspace or delete. And then we've just got to rotate these into position. So you can press R as a shortcut key to rotate, hold shift, and then just drag it into position like so. And you can do this at the beginning, you can do this at this point, and holding shift and alt, which we'll creates a copy, drag it straight down, and again holding shift when we're rotating, just so we're rotating always in 45 degree increments. Zoom in nice and close. Just to make sure we get these in exactly the right place. And there we go, we've created an arrow. We can select all these parts now, and we can unite them in the Pathfinder palette. So you can see that we have a completed shape. But what if we want to change the width of this? The way, the way that we've created this one is at a fixed width. So we could adjust the width, but it can be a bit fiddly. So let's move that one out of the way for now. Now this is another way that you can do it. You can use the line segment tool and you can hold shift and just drag like so. And we're gonna make sure we've got our stroke selected and we'll pick a color and we'll give it a width. Now what we're gonna do, so we're going to hold, click here on the, on the line, hold shift and alt and drag down. We're going to do the same again with the rotate tool, hold shift and rotate. And we're going to go into preview mode, that's command Y on the Mac, control Y on the PC. And we're going to drag this straight up, holding shift until these two points touch. There we go, so they're perfectly touching. And we're just going to select them with the direct selection tool. And then go up to object, down to path and join. So they are now joined. So we have an arrow there, 
We can now adjust the width of this arrow, or we can make it thinner as we need to. But one thing we can do is we have a lot more flexibility. So we can have uh, kind of the butt cap on either end. We can have the round cap like this, or we can set the corner to round two, and that will round off this middle point here. So it gives us a lot more flexibility over our arrow. So then as you adjust that one width value and increase or decrease the weight of the stroke, every other part of the arrow will look correct and it will all update together as one. It won't kind of, if you create it manually and you start messing around with widths and things, it can get quite messy. And this is the most effective way to create a shape that you can then easily edit later on. And then if you're ready to use this and you're happy with this, you can just go up to object, expand, and there you go. You have your finalized shape. One thing I always like to do is keep a copy. So I will always keep my editable version here and then expand another one, just in case I want to go back at a later point and adjust the width. And that's how you create an arrow shape in Adobe Illustrator. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you next time. Take care, guys.